on the platform. I'm Sean Plunkin, and we're doing what we do every morning, folks. We are looking at the zeitgeist, the issues of the day, the issues of the moment. We're trying to make sense of them from the perspective of you, of New Zealanders, of the person, the man, the woman, the transgender identifying as a cat person in the street. Um, and you know what? Um, I think we make a lot. We've made a lot of progress uh, this morning. One issue very much in the public mind is the issue, and whether or not it impacts on your daily life, it has um, assumed a position of importance, the debate of over the Treaty of Waitangi. And to be honest, when I was a kid, I knew about it vaguely, I think, in Waitangi Day. You know, this is 40, 50 years ago. But it wasn't the big deal it is now. It is now, it would seem to me, front and centre of much of the political discussion and uh, I, I use the word loosely, tribal political discussion in this country. I note that this morning, the New Zealand Herald has uh, published a story saying Chris Hipkins claims Māori did not cede sovereignty. The story is, strangely enough, by Moana Maniapoto, a state-funded propagandist through New Zealand On Air and all sorts of other funds, and the ex-wife of the Labour Minister of Māori Affairs, uh, Shadow Minister of Māori Affairs, um, Willie Jackson. So Labour says we didn't cede sovereignty, and last week, last week the Prime Minister says we did, and Tama Potaka, oh, we're not too sure what he says, and um, we heard uh, Shane Jones this morning say some treaty settlements cede a little bit of sovereignty, but Māori did cede sovereignty. And then over the weekend, in our favourite news outlet, Newsroom, Geoffrey Palmer wrote a piece about the Treaty of Waitangi and partnership and the rest that honestly sent me to sleep. But I, I, I almost was going to buy some illicit drugs so I could stay awake while I read it. But it was a long-winded justification of the parlous state of affairs that he has helped to create. My question really is, have we made any progress on, on the debate over sovereignty, co-governance, treaty principles and the Treaty of Waitangi in the past wee while or not? And I think a great guy to give us a good perspective on that is lawyer, former MP, ACT MP, um, member of the Free Speech Union, I think, too, uh, Stephen Franks, who joins us on, on the phone now. Stephen, it would be fair to say there's been an awful lot of korero, an awful lot of talk in the last month or so on this issue. Yeah, you said in the public mind, I'm not sure how much. I, my guess is that uh, most people just put it aside because it's a preoccupation of the, uh, the academic media political elite who sneer at ordinary people. And this is, a, I think you correctly said, it, it's a very long whine that his team aren't in charge and he has a whole lot of criticisms about uh, the policies that the current government was elected on, their manifesto promises and that the fact that they're getting on and implementing them but it's I mean he's a he's a very clever man but I know a number of people including myself who've often found his analysis interesting but the main use of them is to know at the end what not to support. If he supports it, it's probably... You're talking about Jeffrey Parker, so Jeffrey here. Yeah, yeah it seemed yeah. to me a justification, and he is responsible for setting up the Waitangi Tribunal in a way that created the wiggle room for it now to act like some sort of autonomous body. I don't think... I mean, he didn't establish it. It was established in 1975. But he changed the, the way it worked. The, the, well, that's silly, that casual reference to the principles which no one knew, which didn't exist. Um, I, what I blame him for is, as a, a very uh, clever lawyer, knowing that they didn't exist and that no one knew what they did, putting reference to that into the State-Owned Enterprises Act, and as David Longley said to me, um, reassuring Cabinet that it didn't have any real legal, legal meaning, um, I can't remember Longley's exact word. He might have said it was cosmetics or it was to comfort or soothe the iwi leaders. And, of course, that section in the State and Enterprise Act gave Sir Robin Cook the chance to talk about the partnership. Akin to a partnership. Yeah, a metaphor for partnership. And once that word partnership was in the mind, in the hands of the judges, uh, they, 
they and the tribunal have been able to make great hay with it ever since. It, no one knows what the principles are, so they can make them up as they go. Okay. So, Stephen, and after the last four weeks, are we any closer to resolving whether or not we live in a country that is governed by a partnership? Whether or not there are any principles to the Treaty of Waitaki and Tangi and what they, the hell they mean? <laughs> I, um, we certainly aren't any closer to knowing what they might be, and we're no closer to knowing uh, how far this partnership goes, whether it's going to be a... Uh, whether, whether they are aiming at a, a state that where political power is handed out as um, a perk of race. But that's the toxin that was introduced into the Constitution when the Parliament and Sir Geoffrey had a big hand in it and mm. the Parliament blessed the judges going off to make it up as they went. Mm. When I say blessed, the judges, the courts actually didn't have any alternative. When Parliament says in a statute that the there are principles of the treaty, uh, if they can't, if they don't state them, the courts have to accept that there are principles and they have to make them up. So it was that uh, Labor government, that those politicians, and then the national governments which have followed with some mm. dreadful um, appeasers uh, that have left us in this parlous state where we don't know whether mm. we are still equal before the law. We don't know whether it's one person, one vote, uh, or whether we, we, are, we have the leader of the opposition allegedly saying that uh, sovereignty wasn't ceded. Well, sovereignty is certainly exercised by the New Zealand government now. If it wasn't ceded, it was taken. That's the normal way in which sovereignty passes in society. Yeah. It's very rarely by... by As I treaty. said to, to someone from Ngāti the other day, at least Māori had the privilege of choosing their coloniser. <laughs>